Jennifer Roberts here again, this time to cover the process of optimizing your rendering settings in X-Plane 11. This video was filmed using X-Plane 11.0. When we developed the new user interface, one of the things we focused on was making it much simpler to use. So let's check this out in the graphics settings screen. We hoped that with a combination of a few simple sliders and some pretty extensive tooltips, Setting these options for good performance on your individual machine would be simpler than ever before. Our developers integrated multiple features into only a few sliders so that any combination you picked would be more balanced than random trial and error with a screen full of mysterious options that often seem to require insider knowledge on how they interacted. Let's go over the process of setting the rendering options now so you can see it in action. To get started, we need to set up a flight that reflects how demanding your typical flight is. So let's choose an airport with pretty detailed scenery. The demo area, Seattle-Tacoma, or KSEA, is a great choice. I'm going to turn off all AI aircraft and clouds because they greatly impact the amount of work the sim has to do, which in turn impacts our frame rate. However, if these features or a specific custom scenery or payware aircraft are mandatory for you to have a good experience, it's a good idea to go through this process with all that enabled so you can see the impact they'll have on your frame rate. Next, we'll go to the Data Output tab in the Settings screen and check the first box of the first line to show the frame rate on screen in the cockpit. There are a few different numbers displaying on our screen now. The one we're concerned with is the first one here for the actual frame rate, which you can see is approximately 37 frames per second. Now we're ready to start adjusting our rendering options. So first off, realize your settings will be limited by whatever part of your computer is the least powerful, whether that's the central processing unit or CPU, or the graphics card, also called a GPU. Xplane's rendering options are arranged so that the sliders that primarily affect the graphics card are on the left, while the settings that primarily affect the CPU are on the right. However, all the sliders in this screen work together, so we recommend you be very methodical when adjusting the settings here. Let's start by setting everything to minimum and unchecking all boxes. You can see my frame rate is higher now, so I have some room to increase the settings. We're shooting to get our frame rate around 30 FPS. If it's a lot more than this, then we're not looking at as nice a sim as we could have, and if it's much lower, we'll probably encounter stutters and delayed responses while flying. We'll start by adjusting the CPU heavy settings. First we'll turn on parked aircraft. Then we'll turn up the number of objects and reflection detail by one notch each. Go back to your flight and check out the impact. Frame rate's a bit lower, but not too low, so let's keep increasing these sliders by one increment at a time and checking the results. Keep in mind that the number of objects and the reflection detail are very much cumulative. If you have minimal objects, you might be able to max out the reflection detail, but as you add more objects, thereby giving X-Plane more things to calculate reflections for, you'll need to dial down the reflections. On my machine, I hit between 25 and 30 FPS with the number of object sliders set to high and reflection detail set to medium. Now we'll switch over to tuning the GPU settings, or these sliders on the left side of the screen. Start by moving the texture quality slider up one notch at a time. This setting is solely determined by the amount of RAM on the graphics card. You will need to quit and restart X-Plane between each change here to see the impact. So I'm going to skip ahead so you don't have to wait through all the loading screens as I adjust this. Eventually I found I could move the slider to maximum before seeing a large hit to my frame rate. Now I'll adjust the visual effects slider up one notch at a time. I could only increase this slider to low before seeing the frame rate dip lower than I'd like. I'm comfortable with slightly lower texture quality, so I decided to lower that slider to high to see if I could increase the effects more. Now 
In the end, I decided that on my personal machine, X-Plane looked decent overall and ran at an acceptable frame rate with these settings. Note that we only recommend increasing the anti-aliasing or adding scenery shadows if you get all the other rendering settings to a point you're happy with and you still have higher frame rate than you need. Follow the same process of checking the frame rate after every change if you want to add these settings. So as a final reminder, the key to finding a good compromise in the balance of rendering options versus frame rate is to set up the most demanding options you typically use, then increase the rendering option sliders one increment at a time to find your best settings. Then if the scenery is fairly light or the aircraft is not as demanding, you may see a higher frame rate, but you'll know that you don't have to constantly adjust them for your favorite payware aircraft or dense scenery pack. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.